Ladies and gentlemen, we're back once again after an absolute slobber knocker of a first one. Insanely close. We're St. Clair. We're down to their Nexus turrets. And they managed to somehow turn that one around on Fanshawe. And I know Fanshawe's hungry, looking for uh, looking for some revenge here in game number two. Tommy, how the heck did you enjoy that first one? Up no, for another heart no, attack? No comment. No, <laughs> no comment. Com <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. These guys wasting no time. We're going to be hopping into the draft of game number two. And here we are. We already got some uh, some bands coming out. Once again, Singed off the table, as well as Pantheon. Of course, St. Clair. And Olaf, Zoe, and Syndra off the table here for Fanshawe. Looks like uh, Fanshawe is once again targeting Yule's uh, champion pool, as they did in game one. I mean, it didn't slow him down with the Azir. Oh, I guess I should say it did slow him down early. However, turned it around much later. Still made it work. That looks like uh, no ban from St. Clair. I'm assuming that's just a Juani ban because they were hovering it just a second ago. Okay, so did it just glitch out or what happened there? I think it must have been a misclick, but it looks like Fanshawe will be prioritizing the Caitlyn on blue side. Okay, this is more the draft that I'm to used see... to. <laughs> I won't be surprised to see St. Clair pick up Ash and potentially the fifth time uh, they put, they pick Nautilus here. Because that is quite a bit of CC that St. Clair will have if they pick those two up. Absolutely. Of course, Ash being a relatively supportive AD carry, but still able to do a ton of damage. And we got Lilia. That's going to be uh, Trick again. Um... Oh, very much so, yes. But there has been a trend, though, in the mid lane with uh, with Lilia. Really? It is very odd. Even, I think, Faker actually picked it up. Oh, well, if Faker did it, that means everybody's got to do it, right? Looks like Fanshawe is going to look to pick up the set here. And this could go anywhere, really. It can go jungle. It can go top. It could even go support. Interesting. I've never seen one go support before, but you got to... A bit of a brawly bot lane, I suppose, if you want to try that out. I wouldn't be surprised to see if... Okay, oh. there's the Morganas. So now St. Clair knows that is definitely not set support. It's going to be a Caitlyn Morgana bot lane. Okay, and we see but the I, Karma's But I could response. be wrong as well. I could be wrong, though. They could be, like, double, triple flexing the set of Morgana. Wait, because I've... I remember seeing Morgana basically all over the place. Like, exception of jungle. Although I feel like someone's probably tried that at some point. Uh, she actually was... Uh, it actually was a trend. Jungle okay. Morgana for, I think, at least one patch earlier this year in Season 10. That's hilarious. I, it worked. <laughs> if you land your binding, that is. Right. Okay. But it looks like Fanshawe's not gonna want to deal with... Um, the ornaments, as I have previously said last yes. week. Yes. No ornaments today, and apparently no Velkaz or LeBlanc either. It's one more ban on the side of Fanshawe. And they're going to take out the Azir. They're not going to let him go to his previous game. 40 minutes pick. with. Uh... Honestly, so, <laughs> yeah, they don't want to go. Oh, oh. that wasn't Quick locked in. Meal ban. That wasn't locked in, so I got baited. So that is basically Frez's other character, if I recall correctly, yes. up in the top lane. He's been playing it quite a fair bit on his own time, outside of mm. matches. Anytime I see him like personally streaming or uh, just spectating his solo queue games, it does seem to be a Camille. But this would be the first time that we don't get a Shen, and it turns out to be a Renekton Gator up in here. No. Nope. No, Renekton can be flexed mid or top lane. But that is if uh, if Yule actually plays Renekton mid lane. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it in the mid lane here. Now, is this where we get Malphite Oriana, possibly? I I think they're going to opt for it. Because they need a good yeah. way of engage, engagement. And there we go. As you said, Malphite Oriana locked in. Man, I like accidentally being right. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, Malphite <laughs> just... He's the... He's the champion I think about when you think of uh, Oriana Ball Delivery Service. 
That is absolutely brutal. And then Akali coming out here for Yule. Looks like he wants to get crafty and, uh, and potentially snipe the backline of Fansha. But we gotta keep in mind Morgana, her ulti, if if she lands her ulti on the Akali, it gives <clears throat> Fansha true sight of the Akali, whether right. she is in her shroud or not. Yeah, so no no fun in games if you get caught by that. Just gonna quickly get into the actual client here. Yep, giving you that momentarily. Yeah, so hop into here just to confirm where exactly these champions are going. We do have a rough idea, of course. But we could be in for a surprise. Imagine Yule playing Renekton, <laughs> for, for example, if that does happen to be a mid Renekton. Mm. <laughs> you I don't think you've seen, seen any of that? Frez play Akali recently. So they do decide to, to end up swapping like that. It might be a uh, no. <laughs> pretty hard time for, uh, for Frez. Yeah, it does look like it's going to be where we did expect. Frez on the Renekton. It's going to be Trick on the Lilia. Yule's likely on the Akali. Lazia Ash, as well as the Karma for Mainsfu, which that's something actually I didn't even bring up. That was a substitution. Barnacle Boy taking a break here for game number two. Mainsfu coming in. I think they, I think uh, the coach wanted to give uh, Barnacle Boy some time, uh, time in with the team. <laughs> but in an actual match, which is, seems very interesting. Well, it's fantastic to see. I mean, it's preseason, so absolute worst case scenario, something goes wrong. It's not going to be held over your head for very long. And if there's any time you're going to be able to like get some safe competitive practice, it would be now. So wise choice, I think, there from uh, from Coach Yuri, from Blazin, to give him some uh, some field time. I'm interested to see how um, how set jungle will will work into uh, into Lilia, because that can get cutted very easily mm -hmm. if done correctly. But I also feel like uh, Saint Clair kind kind of hindered themselves with the LeBlanc ban because Yule does play a lot of LeBlanc. Yeah, they must have known something that we didn't or something, because, yeah, we didn't even see LeBlanc get hovered or anything during that last um, champion select phase. So, just didn't want it on the board. I mean, Ashley is a pretty immobile AD carry. Something like Le LeBlanc would absolutely blow her up before she had any t chance to even react. Not like an Ezreal or something where you can jump around and try and be a nuisance yourself. You're essentially a sitting duck for Le LeBlanc. That is very true. I also like um, Saint Clair picking up the Karma in retaliation to the Morgana Morgana pick during um, first phase of um, drafting. Because Karma actually counters Morgana in laning phase. If you did not know, I imagine Karma just being able to harass a little bit more since Morgana. Of course, nobody's going to stand in your puddle will willingly. And then, okay, just don't get hit by binding. What else am I uh, going to do? Auto attack? The, the main reason why Karma is um, it's always a, a really good pick into Morgana is because of her um, her Q. Her Q mm -hmm. can easily break um, Morgana shield very easily. Okay. And I'm pretty sure most Morganas max Q first for the extra duration right. for um, on the route. So they don't get that, that max shield until at least level 13. And Karma, on the other hand, maxes Q first, which does quite a bit of damage right. early on as well. Yeah, majority, like, just front-loading yourself with the, the Q for damage. But, of course, instead of having an ultimate, she has that, uh, I think it's the mantra that boosts her ability, right? So that just does so much damage. Like, even the ability without it hurts a lot. But especially in the phase, or the laning phase, where you're a Morgana leveling shield by 13. By the time that happens, it's probably team fight phase and you're probably done the lane by then. Well, I'm actually really looking forward to 
Well, looking forward to this match on the regards to both sides. It's nice to see both teams taking pretty well completely different team compositions. Seeing Swirl, uh, Swirl Swirl Mix once again got the Singe taken away really early during ban phase. Now going to be on the Malphite. As hard of an engager as you can get, basically. And bot lane looking much different as well. Instead of the Ezreal, we've got Hustle on the Caitlyn. Got Morgana as well there for BB. But even on the side of St. Clair, this is the first time we're seeing Frez play something that's not Shen. And the see the oh, Renekton, did, which is I normally... I did not realize that either. And they don't have the Nautilus as well. Yeah, first time we don't got a Nautilus. First time we don't have a Shen either. I think this is the first time we're seeing Karma from Means Fu. I'm trying to remember if we saw it last uh, week or not. I think we might have. Hmm. I can't remember, though. There is no, ch no change in... Uh... It picks for at least, well, at least the series yesterday, last week, three games of Nautilus, three games of Shen. Right, and right, right. Today right. we had another game of Nautilus Shen, but this time it's uh, it's different. Yeah, I'll be looking forward to that. And then we also first time we're seeing Yolana Kali, of course, can be a bit of a flashy champion. Which always is exciting to see. And this is the second time we're getting to see Trick on Lilia. When I think last week we saw it, it was quite successful. Hitting them with the bop, I think it was something like that you were saying. Oh yeah, especially with the uh, with the desync. The bop was a little off, but uh y'all y'all got the gist of it. Yeah. Alright, we're loading into game number two right now. Are you going to be able to handle if another one <laughs> going the way of game one? Or are you hoping for a quick one here from either St. Clair or uh, Fancha? I mean, if you don't see me next week, you already know, you know, you already know why. <laughs> Fair enough. But getting into game here, I'm, I'm interested to see what, um, what Fancha do level one. Because they have a fairly good level one invade. There it goes. So a good level of one invade. Of course, you do have the Morgana, that binding. Quite brutal when trying to invade and whatnot. And of course, like that's a bit of a beef, beefy boy as well. Throw, throw balls at people. You got uh, <laughs> healing for some poke as well. Is there anything that I'm missing that would explain why Panshaw would be a stronger invade? composition uh morgana bind and um and set being able or having the ability to flush into the middle of uh five people oh right he's got like the face cracker or whatever right that's a stun i think but so far seems quiet looks like we're just gonna assign the line of scrimmage could be a change in position here for Set was standing around the blue buff, but it's going to opt to go back there, maybe? wonder if he forgot something. Looks like Sinker is taking uh, an aggressive posture in, in Bot River. They might they might try to look mm -hmm. on uh, on Invade onto the, uh, onto the Raptors again like they did last time with the Lilia pick. Yep, the only one who's not here right now is Fry's up in the top lane, but... Of course, Fanshawe do not know that. Yeah, parked by the Raptors. Looks like they are, in fact, going to steal a couple. And Fanshawe will be none the wiser on this play. It looks like Lily is going to be able to uh, uh -oh. steal the Raptor camp away. Oh, that's a brutal little engage there coming out from Fanshawe. They're going to try and blow away Lassie. Nice and quick. Heal popped right away. Hustle going to try it as well, but the Ignite was on him, so he did not get as much value for it. That's a oh solid my, route that's going to slow things down. That's going to be first blood for Mainsfu. But are they going to be able to turn this around on to BB? Lassie's got to be careful. They're getting a lot of damage. BB's looking to get aggressive on this, but a nice body block there from Mainsfu, but they're not going to be able to secure the kill on to BB but basically all resources blown in that bot lane from both sides. Well played from Fiesta, knowing that he had to uh, body block for, for Lazi there. If he uh, if he got hit by that bunny, he would have died. 
But Fancha, she's gone wrong. So now, so now St. Clair, no, 100% where, um, where Set started. Well, 80%. Now, actually, no, now they know since he's clearing the, <laughs> the ward right there with the, the sweeper. Yeah, that was brutal for Fanshawe. I liked the idea trying to catch them, but unfortunately, I think the big difference there was just the summoner choices and when it happened. Mansfo was able to get the ignite down onto Hustle before he popped his heal. So that heal did not do anywhere near as much in regards to helping him, and that swung that fight, I feel. Oh, very true. It is nice seeing Frez on something that's actually aggressive. <laughs> Other than just Shen for once. Although, pretty well back and forth. Has a slight experience lead, but some of these trades, he still has to be careful for. Can't get too aggressive. Trick is up there, though. Very. They should know that um, that set is bot side right now. I think he's either standing on top of the ward or on top of the scuttle, so they know he's there. Yeah, they, they just pinged them out just to have <laughs> perfect timing. Lafreya's going to have to get a little bit aggressive. Just slowly chop, chop, chopping away at Swirl Swirl Mix. Oh, and the fact that uh, Renekton has no mana is helpful. However, oh, we do have like, a disconnect. Uh, we got a pause coming. Okay, so Mansfo in the bot lane getting disconnected. Hopefully, this will not be too long there. Would hate to see a quick remake after getting the lead that you did. And since we're not on the on the terminal, we can't exactly, uh, as as they would say on LCS, Chrono Break is the terminology right, right, for right. where they, they they like rewind the game the game like a certain amount of time back. Oh, it looks like it's not too long. It was a quick one. It looks like he DC'd for just a split second and then was able to get back into the game. That is awesome. More juicy content for us. Absolutely. Definitely would have had to, would have hated it to see uh, a remake after that. Bit of a rough position there for Boone. Kind of getting zoned out here by Yul. He does have the wave, though, about to uh, crash into Yule's tower. Again, uh, Snicket, or the set rather, being uh, being spotted out on the, uh, the Scryer's Bloom and on the ward as well. So they know where uh, where the set is. So they, this gives Trick uh, free reign over the bot side jungle. And I just saw what you meant there in regards. Oh, hang on a second. Trick looking to get a little bit cheeky, trying to catch a teleporting Boone. However, Boone was almost able to turn that right back around on him. Almost got a little bit overconfident. Trick uh, getting damage on the uh, on Boone though is really good for Yule because he should be very close to level six here. Oh, very true. And could potentially look for a uh, for an all-in potential. Bit of a trade in the bot lane, keeping things even. And I saw what you meant there, how uh, Ansfo's Karma was able to just blow through the spell oh, shield. And here we go in the top lane. Snicket barely going to get out alive as Trick looking for maybe one more shot, but going to have to back off alongside Frez. They could have potentially looked for a kill on on Snicket if. Um... If Frez um, stunned him with uh, the empowered W Ooh. there, because a lot of people don't know, but if uh, if Renekton uses his empowered W on someone with a uh, a shield, it literally destroys that shield. Okay. A trick is still there, possibly looking for the dive, but minions were not there to allow him to really position. Swirl Swirl Mix finally getting to level six as well, so he'd probably be able to at least stun somebody up. BB getting a ton of damage done to himself, but Mansfo is going to eat a ton of damage himself, getting taken down almost in the top, but a nice shot there the from volley. Lazi. The volley coming in clutch, however, eating the trap, and it's going to allow Hustle to stay alive just for a moment. Mansfo barely hanging on with his life. 
Lazi and Miento just playing this laning phase so well for themselves after um after getting that turnaround on the level one cheese from Bansha. And nicely there for Lazi, because of course Miasfo was able to snag the first kill. Now spreading some of the love here as uh, Lazi picks up an one for himself. That bot lane is just going to be tough to deal with. Now it looks like St. Clair is contesting uh, Spanshaw's blue buff here. Mm -hmm. Not wanting to give it over to uh, to Boone. Yeah, just pressured it, but kind of just backing off in at the end of the day. Just making them sweat a little bit. Like they got what they wanted, though. They prevent Oriana from, from getting the blue buff. So now she's going to have mana problems uh, very soon since he does not have that blue buff. Yeah, Oriana with blue buff just being able to constantly fire out abilities is just such a nuisance to try and deal with. And yeah, the fact that they were able to deny that is just going to make Yule's life so much easier here in this mid lane. It looks like uh, Boon looking for a reset while Yule is uh, going to look, go look for vision or potentially a roam. Now yeah, Trick is probably going to have to back up after doing this red buff. And Dragons very well might be something coming onto the players' minds at some point or another. We see Snicket try and clear the area of wards, however. Mansfu on a bit of a roam just to cause some trouble, and it's actually going to stop Snicket from uh, getting any vision around the Dragon. It's actually going to force see... Bungus to come up. I don't see how St. Clair can contest this with uh, Trick having almost no mana and at half mm -hmm. HP as well. Yeah, Trick would have but to back like essentially Fanshaw right now. Opt to... oh. But it looks like Fanshaw are opting to not look for the for the Cloud Drake and go back to farming instead. And they're going to miss out on a bit of a timing here. Although, looks like they're still thinking about it as Boone's going to come down from mid lane. The skirmish happening here in the bot side as well. Top side as well. Frez looking to try and get this duel. Going to pop the ultimate. However, Swirl Swirl Mix going to just back away. Still has his ult available as either a re-engage or an escape if need be. And all right, as they all go back to farm, never mind, Boone goes to Dragon. Snicket goes to Dragon, and they manage to pick it up. Finish up managing to sneak, uh, sneak that Dragon in. Very well played from them, playing around Vision. Yeah, I thought they were going to miss their timing, but in fact, they hit right where they needed to. This and is a Sinclair. really bad spot, actually, for Snicket. If he's not oh, too careful, that arrow. arrow is right on target, and you're going to meet four of the Saints face-to-face. -face. Boone's going to try and escort him out of there, and it very well might work. He's going to slam him down, but not enough to take the kill. Yule's going to secure that. Going to barely get over his life as Trick and Lazzy. Snipe blocked by Mansfu as well. And they're going to be able to get that one for nothing team fights. Good pick onto Snicket Ooh. from St. Clair. And looks like Frez almost gets the kill onto the Swirl Swirl Mix as well. Very Forcing close. The flash. Lazzy's been able to dodge all of these skill shots coming out here from BB and just get a bunch of extra damage to the point we're almost threatening a, an additional engage if there's maybe one additional member of St. Clair nearby, but just enough to kind of have Fanshawe shaking in their boots for the time being. That looks like Fred's going to get some good tower damage and get a couple plates for himself and look for a reset here and potentially look to... Pretty sure he should have enough gold to finish off the Bork or if he opts to go for a more defensive choice in his boots. Oh, we might have to think about having Frez on some more... Uh harassing ag aggressive champions in these kind of situations because I'm looking at this CS difference right now and considering we're only 10 maybe now 11 minutes in that's pretty significant but it looks like Fresh is just going to opt to buy the recurve bow and get that Borg as soon as possible but Sipcar has been doing a good job in terms of uh, of tracking Snake in the jungle oh we it got battles like in multiple spots here bot lane BB's going to try and make this ultimate work, get the stun onto both ever. It's just going to go onto Lazi, it looks like. Going to try and flash away. This entire time, Mansu's just been harassing Hustle. Going to be able to secure one. Spell shields up. Can he survive this next Q? No, he cannot. Going to be taken down for the double. However, we have 
Snack it and Boon, and as well, Swirl Swirl coming down with the teleport. Lazi does not have any chance of escaping this, more than likely. One more shot, Snack it going to take that. That is Unstoppable going to be the unstoppable force, force right on to Mansfu. However, able to trade this out. One more tower shot. He gets three kills in this engage. The bloodthirsty support, 4-0. and oh. <laughs> Onto the Karma. And that entire time Trick was getting the Herald. He's got the Herald and they're just gonna shove mid right now more than likely. This should be a mid tower for them. As soon as they get that, that down to two plates or two and a half, it should be a free mid tower. Yeah, if here comes Shelly gonna try and finish this thing off. There it goes, so. I would say a solid win there for St. Clair overall. Yes, Fanshawe managed to get one kill, but yet St. Clair got themselves three kills plus a tower. Holy moly. That's 100% worth it for St. Clair. No. Oh. No. Yeah, Frez is in a little bit of trouble. He's going to try and fight this one out, though. Just enough healing to keep himself alive versus Snacket. And can Swirl Swirl Mix finish him off? He's going to slowly but surely be able to figure that one out and takes him down and takes out Frez. Yep. Earlier, oh, sorry, earlier we saw Miansva roaming quite a bit, giving uh, giving Lazi quite a bit of solo exp. So him dying in that uh, in that exchange there was not as bad as you'd think it would be. Yeah. If anything, it just kind of evens out now, right? Yes. Oh, we got trouble <laughs> in the mid lane. Boone, nowhere to go. Taken down. Unfortunately, there for Trick didn't get himself an assist on that, but still full kill gold going over to Yul. He was just there for the for the EXP. The EXP and the moral support. Indeed. But it looks like Saints are walking into into the bot side jungle of Fansha, having uh, complete dominance over at the moment. These dark bindings are just not hitting their Tarka right now, I think, for BB. He's got the right idea, but Sinclair has just always been able to see it coming, always dodging it. And it's not been able to find its full value so far in this match. And they just take the buff and leave. It looks like uh, <coughs> BB is opting for a reset when the dragon is uh, is up right now. And this Drake should go over to the side of St. Clair Gaming. Absolutely. And then they're going to try and take the top laders out of commission, both down to about half HP. Trick is right there in front of the dragon. But at the same time, Snacket isn't far behind. In fact, Lassie's got to be a little bit careful. Low mobility to carry. Does not matter, however. Basically, Trick just soloed that thing. So, two sneaky dragons so far. One on each team. There's We're going to get fighting. Infernal Rift this game. So, whoever, whoever gets uh, the, inf the Dragon Soul is going to be in, in quite a good position in terms of damage. It is so cool that they changed it to have uh, each dragon mean something so that every game isn't quite like the last. Unless you get the same one twice in a row. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we did we did see um, I don't know I don't know what rift we saw last week like two in a row. I think it was ocean or cloud. I think it was cloud with the moving speed shrines and all right, that. Right, 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 right. And this tower is going, going, gone. Sinclair just have so much map presence at the moment. And absolute... taking down, sorry, we're taking down both the mid and bot tower early on in this game. And it looks like Yule is going to look for another uh, for to engage on uh, on Taboon here. Yeah, shockwave hits, but does not do like any damage. Pure domination coming out here from Yule in this mid lane. Absolute night and day difference compared to game number one. They might try something up here, though. If uh, but, Frozen uh, Trick but gets Snicket cocky. Here is, but Snicket is, is here to counter the, the dive, though. Oh, not if Swirl Swirl Mix gets popped before anything really happens. Shows his oh hands. Trick goodness. doesn't care. He's just going to go dive in, blast him away, and get away scot-free. Forcing Snacket to do the 1v1 versus Frez. And they managed to turn that into such an uncontested two kills for nothing. That looks like Frez uh, might have overstayed just a tad bit.
Yeah, like he's, he's in a little bit of trouble. It. Oh, he's looking to get aggressive. He very well might be able to turn this one around. One more shot. Oh, oh okay. Hustle. Barely getting that final shot in there, but that actually could have been turned around. I don't blame Fres for going for it. That was almost clutch. I think he would have. He, he was going to die either way, so he tried to go for a lost ditch effort. Yeah, unfortunately, he's not going to have any of those resources now, but if that turned around, that's worth it, and I'll chat every day. Oh, 100%. It looks like St. Clair is going to clear some vision around the, the Rift Herald, getting ready for that to spawn. And then meanwhile, looks like uh, Hustle just completed his IE, if I am not mistaken. He's look looks like he's going to go towards a, um, a QSS for the Ash Arrow. And the Sleep, potentially. Gosh, so Hustle's going to be... He's going to need to hustle up a little bit because he's going to be a little bit behind in regards to damage. Yes, if you land that crit with the IE, it's absolutely beautiful. But, of course, Caitlyn a little bit slower in regards to how fast she attacks. Going to be definitely behind the, the Ash with the Blade of the Ruin King. Not to mention the extra utility that Ash brings. Ooh, that sidestep from Mance for the quick reactions. But on Maybe another he's trying, note, but not quite landing it. On another note, I'm quite curious to see what Lazi will build with those uh, with those two long swords. It could be a death stance or an early last whisper for that Malphite, but I highly doubt it. It looks like uh, Trick just uh, just trampling his way into the enemy jungle and taking all their resources. Getting the Scuttle and the Harald at the same time. Going to secure this and send it down another lane at some point sometime soon. They're basically going to be uncontested for this. Everybody but you will secure that. Because they, they just saw Snake in the bot lane, but it looks like you might be out of position here. Oh, they're going to try and gank... Uh, Swirl Swirl as well up here in this top lane. Going to be forced to use the ultimate. You're going to try and make the play. That's going to be the ace in the hole. Try and make a play. The shockwave going to pull away Yule at the exact right moment. Going to keep all the members of Fanshawe alive and finally get a shutdown here onto this St. Clair Saints uh, mid laner. Unfortunate for St. Clair. They don't get a pick onto uh, onto the Malphite. And they're going to lose a tower for, for that. I mean, since they're alone in this top lane, they're probably going to fire off the Harald up there, I would imagine. It looks like Shelly's up there. And say goodbye to that turret momentarily. There it goes. And possibly start pushing towards this inhibitor up in the top side. I'd like to see that Shelly get another hit onto the in inhibitor tower. Yep, and in fact, it's going to be able to do so. But down on the bot side, we're about to have another skirmish as Trick is leading the charge here onto BB. However... There are reinforcements right around the corner, but at the same time, St. Clair has a few members here just in time for the dragon. So health bars on St. Clair's side looking mighty fine compared to the side of Fanshawe. This should be an uncontested Drake. Yeah, it's going to be uncontested because uh, they didn't have any big ultimates because they used it to, to pick up Yule earlier on. Mm -hmm. So that'll be uh, the second Drake going over to St. Clair. Yeah, Boone just now finally getting the Shockwave back, and it would have been probably just that in the Morgul. Everything else was blown. So another Drake on the board here. For St. Clair, sure, it did come at the cost of Yule's life earlier, but at least they're trading. And keeping that lead going almost at the 10,000 gold lead mark. Oh, playing oh with my fire, goodness. and he, he just, just got wrecks him. <laughs> No pun intended, but BB just got blasted into oblivion there from Yule. Gosh, that just looks so cute. Just dancing around the, the Dark Binding and charging in like it's no big deal. And yeah, BB just gets completely popped. But I don't. But looking at Yule's, I don't, I don't know if I like uh, what he's building. He's going for the Merlo Namicon, where when, um, sorry, Fancha don't have a lot of healing on, on their team. Right, it would just be any, like, base regeneration plus, like, what, the heal from Hustle? That's basically all they really have. It's not like they have a Singe or anything. 
<laughs> it was it was banned. Yeah, he's preparing for the the champ they already banned because yes, of course, Singed and his health regeneration is absolutely insane. But they secured that by banning it earlier in this before the game even started. But Trick finally managing to complete his Leandri's torment. So his uh, his overtime damage with uh, with his passive and Leandri's going to be uh, very big onto uh, onto the tanks of Fanshawe. All right, Baron in play now. St. Clair hovering around, trying to get some vision. Possibly even sneak it if it does allow. Gonna be watching out for Lazi to see if he can catch somebody with an Ash Arrow. And of course, Boone's gotta be very careful. Do not want to try and 1v1 Yule. And everybody's so far back, just playing so defensively, they very well could burn this Baron down and get a massive buff. It looks like Fanshawe has no clue right now. They just have uh, no control of the top side of jungle right now. This gives St. Clair an opportunity to to sneak the Baron, and they should get it. Fairly un uncontested. With the percent health damage from uh, from the Ash and her Bork, and then uh, Lilia dot damage. Like, this is the kind of stuff that I was kind of expecting to see from Fanshawe last game, where they oh, had three themselves sleep, a solid two sleep? Oh, dives in oh, and okay. My. Goodbye, BB. <laughs> nice knowing ya. There goes the BB. center turret as well. BB just got sniped in the face with that Ash arrow. And no spell shield on, and could not tank through that. It's the risk you take when picking Morgana supports, especially when your alt really wants you to be right in the middle of the team fight, but yet you're so squishy. That's kind of brutal. I like, I like how Lazi opted to to build the uh, the Essence Reaver's second item for the additional oh. cooldown to get more arrows. Like literally, gonna... just support Ash. But yet you still do some decent damage. Actually, do quite a bit of damage, uh, especially with the Blade of the Rune King, to uh, onto the uh, the tanks of Fancha. Right. No matter what you're doing, percent health damage at the very minimal, right? Plus all of your extra utility. Beautiful. Because looking at um, the side of Fancha, the only one that really has a lot of armor is obviously Malfa, because he's a rock. That's Absolutely. His passive. And then Set barely has any armor. He only has a chain vest for armor, and everything else, he's just he's just a walking target for uh, for Saints at this point. And then it makes it messy because Akali's mixed damage, right? Not just strictly AP or AD. I think she's strictly AP actually. Oh, okay. I was wondering why we had but, the, but uh, speaking... the Merc Treads there. Oh, sorry. You're good. But uh, speaking of Akali, she opted to. To finish the uh, or build up the Andri's torment and leave the Lubian orb as it is Ooh. to build later. Gosh, uh, you know what this feels like right now. Bring somehow bring Starcraft into the into the broadcast, but this feels like the Zerg. You're just getting swarmed by all sides, and they all still manage to hit hard. <laughs> like, what are you supposed to do? Yeah. Fancho is getting slowly chucked out of this game. They can't really get any resources from their jungle or any kills. Okay, they are going like to try and get a pick onto Yule. Yeah, they're going to blow essentially everything to try and make this work. As oh he's my. still going to get out of there with his life. Swirl, swirl, mix on pursuit. Finally getting one more shot. There's the slow. They are going to finish him off, but it's not going to be for free. One for one trade. Meanwhile, the rest of St. Clair shoving it right down middle. BB definitely going to be going down ignite. Right there, Frez just going to finish things off. Chasing Hustle all the oh way my. to the spawn. May not secure himself the elimination. However, forcing them to go all the way back. Mid turret's gone. The inhibitor's gone. Bot turret's oh gone. Frez. There goes Boone. Big croc from Frez going and securing the kill onto Boone. And this should be game for St. Clair. A complete 180 from what we saw during game number one. St. Clair just looking absolutely dominant from essentially the get-go from the, the level one cheese in the bush there from the bot lane gone wrong. It's just been essentially all uphill battle here for Fanshawe. Looks like uh, St. Clair is going to opt to uh, get the dragon and uh, and get onto Soul Point and potentially look to, to group top lane after that. Let's secure the uh, 
the third and final inhibitor of the game. Yep, last objective on the board, unless you count the Nexus itself, but yeah, the fact that that inhibitor is still there, Yule almost basically secured it by himself earlier. It's down to at least half HP as of this moment. Unless it regenerated a little bit, but speaking it's a of tall task. Uh, speaking of earlier, Yule vi well played from Yule, managing to trade one for one in the in that uh, in that trade, despite mm -hmm. getting ganged on from uh, three members of Fanshawe. Yeah, I think three ultimates got blown there, a flash, and it still ended up being a one for one. That just says yeah. a lot for how Oriana this game is going here for Fanshawe. I think um, Snicket uses ult, uh, Malfoy uses Unstoppable Force, and potentially the Shockwave from Boone. And the Caitlyn ulti as well. Mm -hmm. It looks like Fresh is going to look for something onto Boone. Yeah, all of these Shockwaves from Boone have just been defensive. I don't think he's gotten the opportunity to really use it aggressive on more than one person. It was either on Yule diving on him or Fresh diving on him never been able to properly set up his team for anything and it's really a massive detriment here towards Fanshawe arrow on target hits it's target as well snack it gonna be messed up a little bit by the Nexus but it's a little too far to follow up on but it does not matter they're gonna oh. look to engage it is a sleepy time on one of the players in the background there but they're gonna just wait for the minions the supers are coming and it is gonna get a little overwhelming here in a moment Oh, looks like Fanshawe is going to look for a pick onto Yule here. Yeah, it does opt to go into the smoke, but it's Bungus. Again, looking for a proper time to use the ultimate. Not going to get it. And Swirl Swirl Mix is going to just pop the ultimate as well, but nobody was really there to follow up on. It's going to be Lazi and the rest of the St. Clair squad just tearing through everybody. Trick is finally going to go down. That's going to be, I believe, a triple coming out here from Lazi to finish things off. But a solid job all around here from St. Clair as they take care of game number two in dominating fashion. GG well played. Saints taking the quick 2-0 over Fanshawe. Well, I mean, you're talking to me during the break and you're saying that uh, if you had another game like that, you'd probably have a heart attack. Well, it was very nice of, <laughs> of St. Clair to consider your health and... <laughs> <laughs> just smoke this one nice and quick here for you. But fantastic job just from the get-go in the laning phase there from St. Clair. Nine-day difference. Do you have any additional insight onto that one? Like, other than the battle in bot that we referenced before where the, the bush attack gone wrong, like, what else, like, really stood out there for you? St. Clair just did a really good job at tracking um, Snecket there so that he couldn't look for uh, any opportunities. So if if he looked for a gank, he already, they already knew that what was going to happen and would look for something else on the other side of the map if uh, they could get a counter gank. Yeah, the only time it really seemed to slip up was when uh, Snecket was able to secure the dragon all by himself. But other than that, yeah, it looked like he was completely tracked didn't catch anybody by surprise and was just behind everybody with how the lanes were going. Yule looked like he was just on an absolute tear. Like Trick was unstoppable. Fres was unstoppable. Bot lane was unstoppable. Mansfu and, uh, and Lassie. And unlike the last game that we saw where Fanshawe looked like they were in that position to like extend their lead and go on a tear, St. Clair didn't play sa safe in the slightest. They they just went for it. They pressured objectives as soon as they spawned. And they just used their lead to get a bigger lead. And it was just all uphill from uh, from there for Fanshawe. But good GG well played from, uh, from both St. Clair and Fanshawe. Yeah, it was a fantastic set nonetheless, especially that first game. That was absolutely crazy. And the fact that we're getting oh, games of that already. caliber already in preseason excites me. I do believe the actual season for OPSC starts in a couple weeks. I don't think it's next week. I think we have another preseason game, but I could be wrong. Of course, um, be sure to follow us on social media so you know exactly when those matches are happening in case I don't have it here early. 
But speaking of matches that I do happen to already know of, I'm going to throw this to the schedule real quick. We've got two matches happening this weekend as of right now, or tomorrow. We have the CR6, the Rainbow Six Siege team, have their season opener up against the University of Michigan. I believe we have played them in the past in CR6 action, and it's been close back and forth matches, if I recall correctly. So this one will be an absolutely fantastic one. I do hope you join us for that. And then on Sunday the 20th at noon, Rocket League are looking to get into the CRL, and they got to go through a qualifier tournament to do it. So we'll be alongside them for their run through the tournament all day on Sunday up until success or elimination. So be sure to stick around for that. Follow the channels if you have not done so already, whether it's our social media or Twitch, YouTube. Be sure to get notified. But with that, that is just about it for our broadcast. I, of course, want to give a shout out to our sponsors that do make this all happen. This St. Clair SRC, that's Subway, PC Outlet, St. Clair Alumni Association, the Zuckelman School of Business, and St. Clair College itself. Thank you all so much. It's awesome that we have this opportunity, and it's awesome that we have the new building coming out with the sports arena. It's going to be a fantastic future here for Saints Gaming, St. Clair Saints. And Tommy, I also want to thank you big time for coming in and commentating once again, shouting at the squad in between matches and then coming to drop the knowledge here with me here on the commentary desk. Thank you so Any, much. Anytime, boss. Awesome. As soon as I know when the next league match is, I'll be sure to let you know. But like I was saying, right. that's it for us here tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you tomorrow for some Rainbow Six Siege.